I don't know how to tell you. It, it just turns. I don't know. There's just a way that it looks, and then all of a sudden, it just stops needing anything on it. It's, I, it gets a glow that I know I can just leave it alone. You know? it, it varies. I work in so many different ways. And I do these sloppy things, and I do very detailed things. So I could sit down and just draw something, and I can tell that it looks like what I want it to look like. But the compositions of paintings that have all these abstract marks and things like that, that's, that's where there's a lot of mystery involved until it just kind of clicks and, and tells me to stop. Some of my best memories of growing up are making pictures, you know, so it's really just, it's all I've ever wanted to do. So I just kept pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing at it until I, uh, then in my like later, then like when I was about 26, I kind of really started to take it really seriously as far as trying to figure out how to do it as a, uh, of getting exhibitions and things like this. And uh, then it started to happen pretty quickly. Within like a year or so, I started to get shows and uh, been exhibiting very consistently ever since then. You know, once I knew that I wanted to do it, it, it uh, it's just grown really, really slow and steady, you know, good pace. When I was a little kid, my best friend's dad, he lived with his dad, his folks were divorced, his dad had all these playboys all over the house all the time, so we would just look at them. We were like really young, you know? And so I got really obsessed with the boobs and stuff when we were little. And um, so I've always, you know, drawn girls and little playboy bunnies and things like this, so this was, where I got to like actually present it in the magazine, which was a pretty exciting thing for me. There's lists of every single Playmate of the Year, and that's a shot of the Playboy Mansion from the outside, and you know, it's pretty simple. I, mean, I just like to draw beautiful girls. It's not really uh, any sort of deep meaning behind it. It's just, it's really fun and technically very difficult to draw the hair and shade the body right and make it look like, you know, sexy, because it, it does, you know. I paint them black, then I paint them white, and then I usually put a picture on it. And then I don't know what happens, because I kind of turn off turn myself off, my head off in a certain way and just let it happen. You know, I'm aware of what's going on, but I'm not, uh, trying not to think about it too much. Just let it, let it go. They just come out. I don't know. It's a mystery to me too. <laughs> I don't know how it happens. I walk in and I can't believe what I've done and, like, I come to work the next day and can't, I don't remember doing it, you know? So, there's something else doing it besides me. Oh, uh, I made this piece in the summer of 2009 when, uh, my buddy uh, Dash Snow passed away. So I just went and locked myself in the studio for, I don't remember, it wasn't very long. It didn't take me long to do it. Less than a week, 
and I just sat there and thought about him and thought about all the different things we had done, talked about, and, you know, just, he was a special kid, and uh, I just wanted to make something for him at the moment that it happened, you know, not in retrospect, but it was pretty reactionary to the fact that he had just died. So we were interested in a lot of the same motifs and and things like that, so it was a pretty easy for me to tell the story, you know, it was just, but again, I pushed, this was the biggest painting that I had made to date, and uh, so, yeah, this was for him, still is. I thrive off of making this stuff. This stuff keeps me going, it keeps me sane, it keeps me pushing myself to do the best possible things that I can while I'm alive. And these skulls and things are uh, just very obvious reminders that you're going to you're going to die and you should create beautiful things while you have the opportunity to. That's it. It's really simple. Well, it was in my childhood day, oh Lord, a many, many long years ago. Now with the Spirit, now I'm my Savior, I was filled, not filled, oh, in the The skulls are coming at you as like, you know, they're there, they draw you in, they, you know, they're more often than not lately about just, you know, embracing your life and, and, and making the most of it while you can, and that's what the texts that I use are. I wouldn't, go, I wouldn't call them sweet. I would call them, you know, it's truth. It's not sweet. There's nothing sweet about me, you know? It's just that I believe these things. I live by these words as best as I possibly can. And the only way that I can is by making these pieces and keep repeating myself and putting these same words in over and over again and reinforcing to myself, first and foremost, that what these things say is totally possible. And if you live by this, then you can get whatever you want and do whatever you want with yourself. And for me, it's making art, but you know, it doesn't matter what you do. I'm in a unique position, though. You know, like, I get to just draw and paint. I've worked really hard to get to that state, and that wasn't always that way. But it's that way because I live by these words, you know? So there's a couple of books that I read that really, that I get a lot of these words from or are kind of inspired by. And... Oh, Lord, give up. You know, this is... This is a book called Be Here Now, and my mom gave me this book when I was a kid. It's just filled with all these great texts of, you know, there are, a lot of this stuff is in my pieces, but it's a really important book and everybody should get a copy. And then, um, where is it? But this is the most important one. So this is a, uh, philosophy book from 6th century BC written by Lao Tzu and uh, it's just really just a manual of the way to live life to the fullest that's it and so I read this constantly over and over and over and over and over and over and over again and I will continue to for the rest of my life and the more I read it the more I get what I want Pretty simple.
It does work. It really does work. Yeah, there's just everything on here has a story, pretty much. Tattoo reference books and books about Harley Davidsons and a bunch of history, American history books down there, all different subjects from presidents and things like that to Vietnam and just, you know, mostly Revolutionary War and Civil War type subject matters. And then this side's mostly art and music and uh, yeah, it's like all music here and Indians and movies and like movie stars and because I like to draw movie stars and things like that too. I mean a lot of this stuff I'm looking at it and I'm like that's from that, that's from that, that's from that, that's from that. I'm just, I just like this I bought at a novelty store like a joke shop and party supplies and things like that when I was little so it's that and it's got this little devil with a big boner inside of it, you know. This is like a coin my grandma bought me for the 100th anniversary of the uh, Statue of Liberty. That's my little brother, and this was my grandfather's pipes, and um, you know, all different things on here that mean a lot to me. My studio is a place that I spend, that I socialize quite a bit. People come and hang out with me all the time while I'm working. And it's just nice to give people a view into what, how it's done. And I think it'll be nice for, for, you know, be nice for little kids to come in here, I think. And like, just realize that you can really just have a place and just do whatever you want, you know. My studio is kind of, I've never been in another one like it. It's kind of unique and I really work hard on the environment, not just the, because that's important to me, like how it feels in the room and I've been able to uh, get quite a bit done in a very short amount of time. So, I think it's nice. I think it's gonna be really nice for people to see inside my head that it's not, you know, be great if it was just the pictures out there and if this room just had artwork hanging in it, it would look great. But I think it's nice to share, uh, share all of it, you know? So I love nothing more than having studio visits. So it's really, I just get to have a six month long studio visit essentially, <laughs> which is pretty cool. My name is Wes Lang. I'm 41 years old. I live in Los Angeles, California. That's it. <laughs>